In this video, I want to uh, show you how to read the vernier scale in the hydrogen spectrum experiment. The vernier scale is here. One of the things you need to do in the hydrogen spectrum lab is uh, for three lines or four lines, if you can see them, uh, you find a red line here, for example, you just put the crosshairs directly in the centre of the red line to make sure that you've got the, its position accurately uh, marked. You read the vernier scale, find the angle, and then you find the first order red line on this side. You read the vernier scale again and you find the overall angle, the angle between these two uh, first order red lines, you divide by two and that gives you the angle from the straight through position. So you need to be able to read the vernier scale and that's what I'm about to show you. So here is a ver the uh, vernier scale Suppose that you've lined up the center of the crosshair with, uh, sorry, the crosshair with the center of a line, say the red line, the first order red line, on one side of the cent of the central maximum. So notice that you have a main scale along the bottom here, this ring here, 100. 110, that's 105, that's degrees. So you have 101 degree, 102 degrees, 103, 104, 105 degrees. Also marked are uh, half degree points. Half a degree is 30 minutes. So actually what you've got along the main scale is 100 degrees and 30 minutes, 101 degrees and 0 minutes, 101 degrees and 30 minutes, 102 degrees and 0 minutes, 102 degrees and 30 minutes, 103 degrees and 0 minutes, and so on. To read the position of the crosshairs at the moment, look at the fine scale at the top here and see where the zero mark comes down on the main scale. So this is the zero mark there and right now it's sitting between 100 degrees and 30 minutes and 101 degrees and zero minutes. So the position that you're looking for is between 100 degrees and 30 minutes and 101 degrees and 0 minutes. Write that down. It's between those two numbers. Now you have to go to the fine scale and there's the fine scale and you need to find the line on the fine scale that most closely matches a line on the main scale. You will need a magnifying glass for this. I've used a magnifying glass and it seems to me that the ninth line along here most closely matches a, lot, a line along here, the ninth line, number n line number nine here. So I have to add nine to the number that I just got such that the, the sum is less than 101 degrees. So I have to add nine minutes. I add nine minutes to 30 minutes and I get 100 degrees and 39 minutes. And just to check, that's less than 101 degrees and 0 minutes. So 
it looks right. So the position of the crosshairs is at 100 degrees and 39 minutes. Now, you have to find the position of the corresponding spectral line on the other side of the central maximum. So let's do that. Suppose I've put the crosshairs on the corresponding spectral line on the other side of the central maximum. So again, look at the main scale. You've got 290, 291, 292, 293, 294, 295 degrees. Here you must have 289, 288, 287. To get a rough idea of where the crosshair is, put or oh, have a look at the uh, zero marker of the fine scale. In this case, it's between 289 degrees and zero minutes and 289 degrees and 30 minutes. So write that down. So I know whatever number I get has to be less than 289 degrees and 30 minutes. All right. So let's see what the fine scale tells me. So I'm looking for a line on the fine scale that most closely matches a line on the main scale. I've looked at uh, this scale with a magnifying glass. Actually, the 24th line along, 24 here, it seems to me, most closely matches a line on the bottom scale. So I have to add the digits 2, 4 to the number that I just got. 24 minutes. 289 degrees and 24 minutes is what I get. So the position of the crosshairs is 289 degrees and 24 minutes. Okay, so you get 289 degrees and 24 minutes on the other side of the central maximum. Now you need to find the difference between the two angles, so the, the angle of the, of the spectral line on the right hand side of the central maximum and the angle on the left hand side of the central maximum. Now that's a little bit tricky because to get to the left hand central max to the left hand spectral line you had to cross the 360 degree mark so you can't just subtract one value from the other you have to consider the fact that um, you've passed through 360 degrees so to try to make sense of that imagine that in, or, when, when, in order to um, get from the right hand spectral line to the 360 degree mark you swept through 100 degrees and 39 minutes and then to get to the spectral line on the left hand side you had to sweep through 70 degrees and 36 minutes. So the total amount that you swept through 100 degrees and 39 minutes plus 70 degrees and 36 minutes which, which is 171 degrees and 15 minutes. Remember it's all the minutes are modulo 60 because uh, 60 minutes equals 1 degree. So the total um, angle that you swept through to get from the right hand spectral line to the corresponding uh, spectral line to the left of the central maximum is 171 degrees and 15 minutes. So to get the average angle of the spectral line from the central maximum, you divide that by 2. And don't forget, 
uh, that it's uh, that the minutes are modulo 60. 60 minutes equals one degree. Okay, so the vernier scale on the uh, in the in the hydrogen experiment is a little bit trickier because of the fact that uh, when you pass through 360 degrees, um, well you have to well you have to be careful uh, because. Uh, you pr probably will pass through 360, the 360 degree mark. So you actually have to look at the total angle that you swept through um, in the way that I've shown. I hope that uh, that clears things up. Um, if you have any questions, then uh, put them up on the discussion board, on the WebCT discussion forum, and somebody will answer them soon enough.